thanks for stopping by Big Top Gaming. My name is Brian, and in this video we're going to be going over another troop box for Moonstone, and this time we're going to be looking at The End Is Nigh. So The End Is Nigh contains three different models, and they're all Leshevolt models. One of them is split between Common Commonwealth and Leshevolt. They all have the cultist keyword in common, but then insert a few others here and there. So the first model we're going to touch on is the Commonwealth Leshevolt split faction character, and that's going to be Brother Daniel. Brother Daniel is a human, cultist, and cleric with a melee range of two and a melee stat of two. So he's got that extra threat range or engagement influence, but uh, doesn't have the greatest melee stat in the universe to capitalize on it. He has an arcane stat of four, a little bit above average, and an evade of zero. When we get to the, the rules on him, it, Brother Daniel has a lot going on here. The first one's going to be slightly maddening. You may make one opponent re-roll their die when determining who activates first. And this is a once-per-game ability. So I do like this because it's an interesting way to kind of shift the momentum of the game. If your opponent happen to, happens to have the initiative um, and they roll a lower... Uh, a lower number on the d6 so like they're only calculating like a three or four and you'd really like to try and get that turn out from under them you can steal those early turns or get a chance to steal those early turns right away it just really depends on what happens whether you're trying to beat out the initiative or get a uh, important activation later in the game when there are fewer models on the table the next one is Look at the shiny thing. This passive ability states, if this character is in possession of one or more moonstones during your replenish step, you may have one other friendly character within four and line of sight gain plus one energy. So Brother Daniel can help enable a lot of the other models within Leshevolt, uh, Commonwealth also, of course, but like, um, look at the shiny thing kind of puts him in this role of like, he would like to pick up a moonstone, but I'm not going to be sending him way out on the flanks to go get one because he still needs to be relatively close to something in your troop in order to make sure that they get the most out of, uh, look at the shiny thing. For Brother Daniel's only active ability, we get Plant the Placard. This costs two energy and is a six inch pulse and it can only be done once per turn. You move all other friendly characters within the pulse up to one inch. This character cannot take jog or step actions or make reaction step or make the reaction step action until the end of the turn. So place the placard just helps kick some of your models up. A six inch pulse off of him is fairly large. I think that gives you like a 13 inch bubble of influence. So again, reinforcing, look at the shiny thing, plant the placard exists to put him in a spot where he's able to support the rest of your troop and kick everything forward. Not being able to take a jogger step action isn't the biggest problem in the world, I think, because you're typically going to want to have a moonstone on Brother Daniel. It's just making sure you can protect him by body blocking or tying up uh, your opponent's models because he will kind of be in the middle of the rest of your troop, just kind of sitting there not being able to react to anything. Before we move on to his arcane abilities, Brother Daniel has seven health boxes and then generates three energy with losing the first one on the fourth health box. So he's fairly resilient when it comes to making sure he can keep that three energy and stay effective for the early parts of the game. So the first arcane ability Brother Daniel has is called Bell Ringer. It costs two energy to get this to go off. It's a four inch pulse and ha goes off on a pink of any color. It states, all friendly characters within the pulse restore X wounds. The catastrophe is all characters within the pulse suffer one wound. So with Brother Daniel, I think this one ability on him puts him into a bucket where he's very very good for enabling a specific play style that Leshevolt has available to them. And that's more like a catastrophe style build. And the neat thing is that if your characters are suffering catastrophes... Um, so they still might deal wounds to them, so being able to restore a bunch of wounds across your troop is really great. Um, it it does like it's a suffer suffers a little bit in that it doesn't have like the X plus one wounds that normally those targeted re restore abilities have. But then being able to zap all characters within a four inch bubble is uh, really nice because you're able to get some extra damage out on your opponent. You could maybe catastrophe once or twice with this if you've got uh, 
got the extra energy to do so, which isn't too difficult for Leshevolt to do. Or you could do something like Catastrophe first, knock down your opponent's effectiveness or their um, ability to stick around, and then use two more energy to heal the wounds that you did to your troop back. So uh, there's a lot of interesting versatility with Bellringer. Otherwise, if you're just looking at it for solely healing, it's a really good heal spell that if you're if your troop is up in the mix and getting multiple combats going on where they're taking damage on all fronts, you don't really have to pick and choose which one you want to heal anymore. You can just go ahead and do a big pulse to heal all of them. The final arcane ability that's available to Brother Daniel is called The End is Nigh. This costs four energy, so he does need some assistance from the rest of your troop to get this to go off. It does cast on a pink of any color and states choose a model within three inches and line of sight of this character then choose another model within three x inches and line of sight of this character place the first model within three inches of the second model and then the catastrophe on this states this character's controller must choose to either have him suffer four wounds or be removed from play so the end is nigh is very reminiscent of Shabaroon's Transcombobulate. It's a little more screwball-y, but um, you're essentially just picking two models and making sure that one gets much closer to the other. So it's a really great threat, a threat extender and can kind of catch your opponent off guard. They might think that they have a safe... Uh, a safe Moonstone carrier off away from the rest of your troop, but then you get to go... If you get and the end is nigh off, you get to zap them around to somewhere close to a model that you would like to be doing a lot of damage, maybe something like a Lubard or something like that. Now, the Catastrophe is interesting, and I think my inexperience with this game is where maybe some of the confusion comes up for me. I don't know if there's any anything in Leshevolt that really synergizes with having Brother Daniel removed from play, and there's so many this character and that character, or this character referred to on the end is nigh. I'm pretty sure this character is referring to Brother Daniel and not one of the other two that you pick. If it was one of the other two that you pick, this ability's crazy and the catastrophe's awesome, but I'm pretty sure it's Brother Daniel, and I don't really know why you would want him to either suffer four wounds or get removed from play, but maybe in the comment section, people who are a little bit more experienced with Leshevolt can touch on that because I'm not really sure where the what the 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 reason for this catastrophe is if it works the way that I'm thinking it works. So Brother Daniels has a signature move called Thwack and it's an upgrade for sweeping cut. It's damage type impact so it switches slicing for impact damage and then it has the same same null effects that uh sweeping cut does so high guard gets null and then low guard gets null damage but then it trades a follow-up for a much more reliable damage track we're going from uh two zero follow-up zero two uh over to two two one two for falling swing thrust sweeping cut rising attack so um interesting that it uh, becomes a little bit more reliable of a damage dealer, but then has the end step effect. The opponent suffers minus one melee stat until the end of the turn, so it has a debuff baked into it that I think is really, um, really, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's very indicative of Brother Daniel's role as a support character. So, um, Thwack in general I really enjoy because if your opponent has, like, reductions to slicing damage, they're not going to expect you to play a sweeping cut because they're just they're going to reduce it anyways but with brother daniel they have to kind of watch out because switching the slicing damage to impact damage could mean a lot to fighting certain models and having that minus one to melee stat is a really big deal um it, it's the less cards your opponent can draw means they have to spend more energy to go for it, or they just have to accept that they're going to have a lower melee stat and that kind of balances out the melee stat on brother daniel's being two because you can just kind of, you have a little bit less of a melee, you have less of a melee option for your opponent. So I think Thwack is a really interesting card for him. Um, I, I really like the kind of switching setup that it can end up putting, uh, or just it just kind of transforms Sweeping Cut a bit. 
Next, we're going to shift our focus over to Kavanaugh the Jongler. Uh, Kavanaugh is Leshevolt only as much as I wish he was Commonwealth because he is a gnome and I'd love to play him in Commonwealth gnomes. But he, in addition to the gnome keyword, he also has cultist and the rogue keyword. So we have a melee stat of 3 and a melee range of 1 inch, an arcane stat of 4 and an evade of 0. Uh, Kavanaugh has 8 Da- eight health boxes on his damage track and then like all like most gnomes i should say his en- his three energy is concentrated at the back end of his card so he's not going to be losing energy until he takes his sixth damage making him fairly resilient and effective throughout the long game Kavanaugh has a ton of active abilities, and we'll start off with Roly-Poly. This costs 2 energy. You move 2 inches, and then reduce this character's evade stat by minus 2 until the end of the turn. So this is nice for Kavanaugh. He does like to kind of get up into the business and be really annoying, but the evade stat 0 doesn't really help him a whole lot. So being able to just kind of shift 2 inches up for that 2 energy, and then getting that uh, that negative evade stat makes it so he's a little bit more difficult to take out. Having a, a gnome with minus 2 evade means that uh, if your opponent's stacking up a bunch of arcane abilities, it's going to be difficult for them to actually do anything to Kavanaugh, and if they do hit him, they're still it's still going to take a while to actually c- clip through his boxes to make sure that he loses energy now. The next active ability on Kavanaugh's card is Black Comedy. This costs zero energy to activate. It's uh, got a six inch range and has the stipulation of only being able to be done once per turn. It states target other friendly character suffers two wounds and gains plus one energy. So we had already talked about how Brother Daniels likes to get an extra bump in energy and Kavanaugh can enable that for zero cost. It's uh, really nice to be able to get this kind of multiplier that doesn't really cost you a lot of resources, just positioning. And with Brother Daniel being a person who likes to have others around him for his plus one energy bump for having a moonstone or moving people one inch, uh, Kavanaugh fits right in just kind of leading the charge and kind of getting in the way for other people to stop them from getting to Brother Daniel. And with Bell Ringer being a pulse, that means it includes Brother Daniel in that healing bubble, and uh, that means that the damage that he takes for getting that plus one energy can be used later to heal him up. So Black Comedy is just a really great ab- ability to have on Kavanaugh. It makes him uh, quite essential in, at least I feel like a lot of the, uh, um, a lot of the cultist-driven uh, Leshevolt builds. Juggling Fate is his last active ability, and it costs four energy to do this, so you'll want to get that extra energy on him, which Brother Daniel can do if he's holding a Moonstone. But if this ability states, gain plus two energy, you draw the top three cards of the Arcane deck, look, then place them face down, one on top of the deck, one on the bottom of the deck, and one beside this character card. At any point, you can add the removed card to your Arcane or Arcane Resist hand. And if you do, uh, you then at the end of the action, or if this character is slain, shuffle the card back into the arcane deck. So juggling fate's a a mouthful. Essentially, you spend your four energy, you're going to get two of it back, but then you're getting to take a look at the top three cards, one on the bottom, one on the top, and then you keep one for yourself that will last as long as Kavanaugh does or until you actually use it. And I really like this ability because it gives you the chance to bury a card that your opponent might want in the next activation, put a card maybe on top that you're wanting or you don't want your opponent to have, or I mean a you want your opponent to have because it's poor, like it's not a great card, but then pocketing one to just use whenever you need it is quite nice. And with Kavanaugh being fairly resilient on his own, uh, it means that this card can stick around for a while. And we already know that Leshevolt, I guess if you've looked at Leshevolt models in general, there are quite a few ways to do things like this, um, keeping arcane cards on deck to be used later. It makes their arcane really uh, functional in that when you really need something to go off, you can kind of guarantee it if you've ended up picking up the right card. So Juggling Fate is a really fantastic ability on him, and he has the, at least from his active abilities, if he's getting that extra energy, he's got the ability to kind of do everything he wants to do in a turn. Shifting over to his single arcane ability, it's called Butterfingers. It costs two energy to do, has a range of six inches, and you need either you need a three of any color to make this go off. And it states, target loses possession of one moonstone they are carrying. You place it in base contact with the target with a depth value of one. And the catastrophe is this model discards all energy. So Butterfingers is a really interesting arcane ability within the Leshevolt cultist bubble or atmosphere, I should say. Um, 
think of thinking of Brother Daniel's the end of Isni, you can Butterfingers a model that's already activated of your opponent, so they lose that Moonstone, and then you use uh, the end is nigh to just kind of transport them far away from that Moonstone, so that somebody else, like maybe even Kavanaugh, can go up there and go to that moon Moonstone and pick it up. And there's fairly low risk on this one because if you've done everything else you've wanted to do, like you roly poly and black comedy someone, and then you butterfingers and just bluff it, the catastrophe isn't all that big of a deal. And if your opponent has multiple models within six inches that have moonstones i think they might be a little reluctant to call a bluff on this unless they know you're not getting it uh a spec with because you're you're discarding all your energy but it doesn't matter if you used it all but a, a fun trick with him is if you are juggling fate or you have a, a a juggled fate card sitting face down you can go ahead and rip that one up and say that you know this is the three of green or something and your opponent might be like well they probably saved that one so i'm not going to call the bluff in case or to stop my opponent from dropping another moonstone so you can do some really interesting mind games with people with kavanaugh the jongler with butterfingers kavanaugh does bring an upgrade to rising attack for his signature move called vanishing balls trick uh, it does switch the damage type from being variable to just straight up impact damage. And when you look at the damage uh, track that's on uh, Vanishing Ball's trick, it is the exact same as Rising Attack, so you're really not gaining or losing anything unless you're worried about the uh, the slicing or piercing needing to be done. Uh, if you're fine with impact, then go for it. But um, it has the end step effect that states, the enemy discards one energy if available and target friendly character within six gains one energy so the neat thing about this is that this is not a card that excludes kavanaugh from getting this so he could just sap an energy off of your opponent and then put it on himself to keep punching him so if you're if you're feeling spicy with your melee stat of three um you can do this multiple times as long as you're hitting these rising attacks you if you're like i said if you're feeling like testing the cards a bit but um it's nice to be able to get into combat and activate before your opponent does so you can steal energy off them, kick it back to someone else. So you don't always need to use Black Comedy to get energy out, even though you're likely going to anyways. But if you want some other ways to get energy that don't cost you uh, damage on your models, uh, Vanishing Ball's trick can do that for you. So I feel like this is a really, uh, a really good signature for Kavanaugh, and he just seems like he... A little, he's a little bit different of an enabler than Brother Daniel is. He's a uh, support but can do work, but really wants to try and help other people do uh, the things they need to with all this extra energy. So I think he's a, a multifaceted piece that you really don't see the value in him right away until you start putting him on the table. The final model that comes in the End is Nigh box is Callista, Leshevolt Priestess. She is Leshevolt only and is a human cultist cleric. She has a melee stat of 3 with a range of 1 inch and an arcane stat of 5, which is well above the average for arcane stats, and then has an evade of 0. She brings 8 health boxes and doesn't start dropping her 3 energy down until she hits that 5th damage taken, so she's fairly resilient and can sustain energy production for a, for a good amount of time in the game. She also comes on a 30mm base. Now, she happens to sport three different passive abilities, and the first one of which is Dagger. If this character deals piercing melee damage, increase the damage dealt by plus one. So she's got a, an average run-of-the-mill melee stat, so being able to get some extra piercing damage out there, considering many of the cards have piercing damage available to them, is pretty nice. It means if she needs to deal damage, she can get out there and do it. She also has Joy of Entropy. Whenever another character within four inches is slain, this character gains plus one energy. So this is any character, friendly or enemy. There's like, I thought that maybe at first this would synergize with Brother Daniels, but he specifically states that he removes things from play or removes himself from play. So you won't get anything off of this for that catastrophe. But if you're doing damage and dumpstering models or your opponent's doing damage, they have to be careful about how much uh, energy they are actually stacking on Callista that turn. And with you suffering a bunch of catastrophes or possibly wanting to suffer catastrophes, um, your opponent will need to be a little bit concerned about giving her a ton of energy. Callista's final passive ability is going to be Conductor. Other friendly cultists and spirits within four gain plus one arcane stat. So this is 
uh, just I always like seeing this. It means that uh, she's a really good enabler for the keyword cultist. Now, spirits definitely are something worth discussing as well. Um, but I think I'm going to skip over the spirit business with her and really focus in on cultists to show that she really synergizes with the things that she happens to be uh, uh, kind of packaged with. So Brother Daniel's getting extra cards on either of his abilities is really nice since he's looking for some of those high pinks. And with Kavanaugh looking for three specifically, being able to dig a little deeper works out quite well. So it's just, I always like seeing plus one arcane stat for a particular keyword because it really drives them into what they want to be doing. Callista's one and only active ability is called Paroxysm, and this has a energy cost of four, so she will need that help from Brother Daniel or uh, Kavanaugh to get that extra energy on her, or something will just need to die around her. She can actually enable herself as long as something's, uh, you know, being slain around her, but it's a three-inch pulse, and you can only do this once per game. All other models within three inches suffer a f suffer four magical damage and then are moved three inches directly away. So thinking about how much weird chip damage we can get out there with uh, Brother Daniel and some other magical damage that might be available to Leshevolt or shooting damage even, um, it allows this uh, really interesting like massive bomb button that Callista's got it's not difficult for her to get that four energy um considering she also produces energy uh fairly reliably as she takes damage and then uh brother daniel's being able to heal her back up quickly um makes it so that she should have that four energy whenever you really want her to have it a three inch pulse for her is pretty big it's only like a seven inch effective area around her that this happens in but uh being able to do four magical damage that a lot of uh troops don't have a whole lot of resistance to uh means that you could easily like just dumpster two models or you know whatever you've been doing if you've been chipping damage in there especially with brother daniel's catastrophes um this just gives you a really interesting way to just drop bombs on people and wipe out uh, half a troop or something. And then with her getting extra energy uh, for uh, models being slain, it's not difficult for her to build up some energy to do some other things with her, with her uh, activation, like stepping or picking up moonstones or fighting. Callista does have an arcane ability called Leshevitz Caress. It costs three energy and has an eight inch range. It goes off on a pink of any number the target restores X plus one wounds and gains protection. The first time this character would suffer damage, reduce that damage to null until the end of the turn. Uh, it has the catastrophe that states this character suffers two wounds. All other models within six suffer one wound. So Leshevitz Caress is quite a interesting ability um, for just being a healing thing, right? So you can take a model that's really important, like a big damage dealer or someone who, like a Lubard, who's taken a bunch of wounds, heal them back up, give them protection, so they have to. It takes that much more effort to start dealing damage to them again. Or you're keeping like a, a dual Moonstone holder safe, um, so you're getting that pointed restorate or the pointed healing if Brother Daniels can't quite keep up with it. But then the catastrophe is really neat because. Uh, if you're trying to set up for a paroxysm later, um, you can just force the catastrophe catastrophe on her to take the two wounds and then bubble out the the six inch one wound uh, effect that she does. And then later on, you could be setting yourself up for that paroxy paroxysm to do like five damage. I don't know how regularly you'd be able to get like seven energy on her to just kind of do this, but there are ways to make it happen if you wanted to go uh, nuts on trying to make like a five wound uh area of effect around her so she has some interesting has an interesting role with this particular ability because it heals and hurts Callista does bring a signature move that upgrades low guard and that's going to be slip into shadows now we've talked about this one before but uh it has uh null damage on every single thing so no matter what your opponent plays it's canceling out the damage and then has the end step effect of placing this model within four inches so if Callista's you know, gone up and done her paroxysm thing, uh, she can then, if someone's trying to retaliate against her because she's lost a bunch of wounds, you can go ahead and just upgrade a low guard into slip into shadows and get her into safety so your opponent really can't uh, get at her again. So it kind of makes it so your opponents might not want, your opponent might not want to uh, go after her with slip into shadows. So it, it puts your uh, opponents in a really interesting place when it comes to trying to deal with Callista. 
So I really wanted to use this video to kind of present the idea of the Catastrophe Leshevolt build, but uh, it's going quite long. These models are really complex and have a lot going on with them, so I'm going to pick some low-hanging fruit here for synergies, and that's going to be Boris the Bunny Summoner. And the reason why I'm adding him in here is uh, he is, of course, Leshevolt, but um, has the it's really summon the murder bunny that makes me want to have Boris in this conversation. The murder bunnies aren't super duper survivable, and with you being able to like trigger off wounds on them from your own catastrophes, it's easy to get them down a little bit. So Boris could just be sitting here summoning a murder bunny or two a turn, and then setting them up for Callista to gain extra energy by these things dying. And there's a couple other Leshevolt things that synergize with animals too, so you can definitely build a really interesting kind of split keyword list where you're kind of working with animals and working with the cultists at the same time. And Brother Daniel can scoot them up, heal them if you need them to be just road bumps, roadblocks for your enemy if they're having a hard time dealing with them with multiple engagements with uh, getting the distracted bonus on. So I feel like Boris is a good inclusion here, but I'm definitely going to save the discussion for a uh, catastrophe-centered Leshevolt build for later because it just gets more complicated at that point, but Boris is a really easy win for something like Callista and, uh, and Brother Daniels, and then if you bring along the Kavanaugh, then he's just kind of part of that too and can give uh, Boris some extra energy so he can easily summon two Murder Bunnies a turn. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. Uh, Leshevolt's a very complicated faction to talk about. It can be simple if you want it to be simple, but the end of his nigh box is very not simplistic. It's got so many different ways you can branch off to try and utilize this box within the Leshevolt faction, and cultists in general just can do some really strange things. I do think that that keyword might need a few more releases to really flush itself out, because right now it seems like it's really on the edge of really having a clear... Uh, directive where it wants to go, but it's just a little shifty. So uh, thanks again, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.